Hey, good day to all you alternative thinking, life loving maniacs. Welcome to another episode of Weekend Van Driller. Now, this video is basically going to be a response to a couple of comments I received about my uh, last video that I made about the tiny homes the other day. And to put it all in a nutshell, basically. The main concern that those individuals had was the fact that many city jurisdictions frowned upon tiny home living. That it was either frowned upon or in many cases outright against the city codes. So while all that are valid concerns and yes that it all unfortunately in this so-called free country is very true there are certain ways that you can get around those stipulations now one of the people that commented on that particular video mentioned that if you were going to do tiny home living you would be better off building your tiny home on a trailer that way you can move it which the individual is absolutely correct if you're going to live in the city or the suburb or and definitely if you're going to live in the metro that's you know that statement is very correct but even if your tiny home was on wheels you still depending on how big the government is of where you want to move to and also and also depending on your neighbors around you even if your tiny home is on wheels, there still could be some issues. However, there are certain ways that you can skirt around all that like everything else in life. <clears throat> so, basically this is what I'm going to tell you. The video I made the other day about tiny homes, I mean mainly the people who that type of a tiny home would be for would be for people who number one own the piece of land and number two that piece of land is preferably out in the country where your government is smaller and plus you don't have to deal with so many flaky individuals like you do in your suburbs and in your cities and even in some of your small towns so the tiny so the shed idea but I showed everybody the other day about taking one of those sheds <coughs> man, excuse me, and turning those into tiny homes. That idea would primarily be for people who A, don't mind living in a rural community or somewhere out in the country where the government is smaller. So you're not going to have people watching and regulating every little thing that you do. And also, your neighbors are going to be a little more down to earth. They're not going to be all flaky and calling the cops over any small, corny bullshit. And also, it would that type of an idea would also be for individuals who wanted to remain 100% off-grid. Now, one of the people that left a comment about my last video was concerned about they would have to pay a bunch of money for a septic system and a well and all that other kind of fun shit. Well, if you want to follow the law by if you want to follow the law slash the city code by the T, and you want to live in the city or in the suburb, then yes, that individual is correct for the most part. However. If you don't mind living out in the country or in a rural community, like I was suggesting a minute ago, then you're not going to have to worry about paying a ton of money to build a septic system or a well. You would just simply purchase a piece of land out in the country or rural community. You would place your tiny home, whether you want it on wheels or rather you don't want it on wheels you would place your tiny home on that piece of land 
and you would live out of that home 100% uh, what's that word I'm looking for 100% off grid <clears throat> I mean basically your electricity would be your solar setup I mean for those of you that van drill or live in your cars a lot of you already have a solar setup of some sort slash battery bank in your vehicle anyway so you would take that type of a setup and just put it in your tiny home and it, the setup might have to be a little bigger and a tad bit more advanced but the concept will still remain the same and as far as your water you would just have some five gallon things of water and maybe a few little water pumps and then a few and then like maybe one or two sink vanities one for your kitchen and one for your miniature bathroom if you want to go that route or you can just have one sink vanity period like many of you do in your vans for those of you that are full-time van drillers and then of course for your heat you would either use propane or depending on your solar setup you can even have a small electric heater to heat up your your home so in a nutshell that's basically how you would skirt around the whole thing with the city ordinance stipulations now if you want to live in a city or in a small town you there's certain ways you can skirt around the whole the whole building code stipulation even then now I'm currently at a property that a, a friend of mine owns and I have gotten his permission to come on this property so I just want to show you an example of kind of what I'm talking about so I'm going to show you this example right now before it gets too dark take a look at the property first of all now this property if I had to guess is a maybe a quarter of an acre or so the, this lot is this particular lot is long now on this property you do have a heavily neglected house that's been abandoned for some years now this particular piece of property is located in a small city I don't know anything about the neighbors here so I couldn't say anything about them but here's the house and obviously if I were to buy this lot I would tear this house down because this house is garbage and ain't worth anything. Now on this piece of property, if I can get in, that is. You do have a little shed right here. A little shed now this shed is about I can't I don't know how big it is to be honest with everybody out here but and I apologize in advance for the wind Kind of difficult to get to the front of that shed so we're going to just talk about this piece of land real quick now basically you got like a quarter of an acre lot here like what and whoever would have bought this lot 
what you can do is now around here you would probably be better off having your tiny home on wheels that way on a daily basis or on a weekly basis you can move it from one spot to another because some city jurisdictions as long as you move your travel trailer or your tiny home from one spot to another at least once a week just to prove that yes it's movable then you won't have to worry about city codes and even if you do that technically they're gonna frown on you living there full time but there's ways to go around that like what you can do is right where my camera's pointed you can put your tiny home around that around there and then just like the next door neighbor over here has got their wooden fence up you can put up a wooden fence around your tiny home you can put up a wooden fence around your tiny home for added privacy plus you know you, you won't be as obvious that way either you can just put up a fence big enough for your tiny home as real as your vehicles so so here's the layout of the lots yeah, here's a close view of this abandoned piece of junk Now here's the inside of this shed. Now this shed would be a nice little shed to, I mean obviously it's got a lot of debris on it. Looks like someone was doing some contract work and they threw all their shit on the floor here. So anyone who bought this property from my friend would have to do a lot of cleaning of this debris and once you clean all this debris up you would be able to take this shed and turn it into your tiny home now this shed is already on a permanent foundation so it's already a pre-existing structure all you would have to do is hook up your you, know, you would have to do your drywall your insulation and then whatever you want in your tiny home you would be able to put in this little thing sorry for the shaking here just a lot of debris here So here's a, this ain't a, the best image in the world, but here's a image of this shed here. Because sometimes when you purchase a property like this on, on a city lot, sometimes you might have something like that shed that might come with the lots. Sometimes if you get real lucky sometimes if you get real lucky you might even 
Sometimes if you get real lucky, All right, we're back in the van. Sometimes if you get real lucky, you might be able to purchase a lot like that with a one or even a two car garage. Which in that case, same deal. You can take that garage, get it out if you want, uh, insul uh, put your drywall in, and then blow in some insulation and turn that into a tiny home. Now, with any of those ideas, once again, you're gonna wanna remain 100% off grid, and you're gonna also wanna fence in that drilling. You're gonna wanna fence in that drilling for added privacy. And when you're fencing in, you're gonna wanna fence it in, you're gonna wanna make the fence uh, long enough to where you can also put your vehicles by your house as well, if that makes any sense. So, this lot that I'm currently on, it's a city lot, it's a small city lot, and I have a neighbor that owns a city lot identical to this one, and she, she's, had, she's got her RV on it, and her daughter lives in that RV full time on it. And no one bothers her because, number one, she moves the RV once a week, which is what the city requires where she's living. And number two, she's got her lot fenced in for added privacy. So people are not, so people are not going to be able to simply look over and see lights on and see you in your RV or in your tiny home doing your thing. So I thought I would just share that with those who were concerned about city ordinances and all that other fun bullshit. Hopefully this video helps you out a little bit. And feel free to question and leave comments below. Like and subscribe below. And thanks for watching another episode of Recon Van Driller. Have a wonderful rest of the day. See you on the next video.